Stephen Miller's uncle has been throwing him under the bus. And it has been fantastic. So it begun, it began with a political column that I particularly enjoyed, and I want to share some excerpts for you. Now, of course, Stephen Miller's family was a family of immigrants. They came to the United States in 1903. Skip ahead to graphic 23. His uncle, David Glosser, writes. This family emerged from poverty in a hostile country to become a prosperous, educated clan of merchants, scholars, professionals, and most important, American citizens. What does this classically American tale have to do with Stephen Miller? Well, Izzy Glosser is his maternal grandfather, and Stephen's mother, Miriam, is my sister. So they escaped from, you know, the the. Nazis came to the United States seeking refuge and asylum, and they were able to do what most immigrants do, create an incredible life for themselves here in the United States. And so, you know, his his uncle is saying, like, look, you're an idiot. You know, your family did this. They were running away from extreme violence. They were trying to protect themselves and their children. You are the product of immigrants here in the United States. And yet you go out of your way to propose laws that make it incredibly difficult to become a citizen here in the US. You're the one who crafted the zero tolerance policy at the border, separating children from their parents. And I just love that a family member is speaking out and sharing you know, his family's history and telling the truth about you know, Stephen Miller's background. No, no, I love this guy. And and so, but the the details are super interesting. So there was already pogroms in Eastern Europe before the Nazis came. But he says, had Wolf Lieb waited, his family would likely have been murdered by the Nazis, along with all but seven of the two thousand Jews who remained in Antipol. So they killed almost every Jew in town. Okay, and he said, I would encourage Stephen to ask himself if the chanting, torch bearing Nazis of Charlottesville, who support his boss, seems to court so cavalierly. Do not envision a similar fate for him. Damn. And they did, man. They chanted blood and soil, the Jews will not replace us. And and then hit, and Trump came out and said there's good people on both sides. No, there are no good people on the Nazi side. So he said also, I shudder at the thought of what would have become of the Glossers had the same policy Stephen so coolly espouses been in effect when Wolf Lee made his desperate bid for freedom. And 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 yeah, the whole family might have died if we rejected them. But luckily, America was great enough to accept them and not to reject them. And what did they do? They worked really hard. And when they came here, they were incredibly poor. And he had to work as on the as a, on the street corner corner peddling stuff. And and now Donald Trump says we only want the best. And so what he means by that is rich people who could buy. A visa for five hundred thousand dollars, but if you bring your family, he calls that chain migration. Unless, of course, he's bringing his wife's family, which he just did through chain, what he calls chain migration. And now this is Stephen Miller's uncle saying, "What do you? How do you think we got here? And do you think we got here because we could afford a five hundred thousand dollar visa? No, we got here with no money in our pockets. We were running for our lives." And he said, "Then when they got here, he said we didn't. We faced terrible discrimination and anti-Semitism, etc." But he said it's, it wasn't even as bad as what you're doing to minorities today in America. What you're doing, what your boss is doing. He said at least they didn't kidnap our children from us. Jesus, man, he's so right. And it's brave, I know it's his nephew and it must hurt. But it's brave to call him out and say, what are you doing? My God, look at our family's history. And, and you're taking their kids from them. What kind of a monster does that? So uh, his uncle, uh, David Glosser, also did a few press interviews, and I want to share one of them with you. Let's take a look. I have not been interested in having public notoriety. I've been interested in having my private life and taking care of uh, those things which are important to me. But as I say, I felt it was, uh, it was incumbent upon me to to raise my voice to let people know that this is a country of immigrants, and our family were immigrants. In fact, we were refugees. Uh, if uh, if my ancestors had not immigrated to the United States when they did, if they'd waited a few more years till 1924, the door would have been shut. 
my parents would have gone up the uh, crematoria chimney. Uh, I wouldn't have been born, my sister wouldn't have been born, and certainly Stephen wouldn't be, would never have existed. But writing this so publicly criticizing your nephew, is everyone in your family on board on this? We have a huge family. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't, I wouldn't offer to speak for my entire family, but uh, dozens of family members have encouraged me to push forward with this. You don't expect to change Stephen's mind with this, do you? No, he's made, it appears that he's made his entire political and personal career on this single issue for reasons that I don't really know. So just to give you uh, some background on Stephen Miller, he's been you know, spreading this anti-immigrant hate uh, throughout his life. Uh, he uh, grew up in Santa Monica, California, and there's video of him uh, you know, giving speeches and stuff at his school, Santa Monica College, I believe it was. Um, and yeah, he's always had these same views. I don't know where they come from, but he's now implementing these ideas uh, in, in some of the cruelest ways imaginable. So. Um his uncle told stories about how he's helping Hebrew HIAS, what used to be called Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society. Why? They helped his family when they had come. And he says, when they came as immigrants back in the day, mm -hmm. they were called scum, rapists, gangsters, drunks, and terrorists. And, it, and he said, we weren't. And look at, and we did wonderful things here. And now you're repeating it and you're calling other people that. So instead, what, what the uncle is doing is helping that, that group, uh, HIAS, with other immigrants that have come in. So a kid from uh, Eritrea, a kid from Yemen, uh, and, and all immigrants who suffered torture and terrible things, they're, whether they're Christians or they're Muslims, in different circumstances. Now that's an American, that uncle. That helps him, and but he had this wonderful sarcastic line that I, I gotta share with you. So he's talking about how this 14 year old kid from uh, Eritrea suffered torture, and by the way, partly because they found a Bible under him, it, it, was a, it was different Christians who were discriminating against him. It's a long story, but he went through hell to get here. And what did he do? He crossed the border illegally in Texas looking for asylum, because he really needed asylum, okay? And he said he was going through all this, while my nephew Stephen was famously recovering from the hardships of his high school cafeteria in Santa Monica. <laughs> Damn, that hurt. <laughs> okay, so uh, my new favorite uncle in the country. Uh, thank you for standing up for all immigrants uh, and, and understanding that demonizing them is, is not the right way to go. And he talks about the ethnic demonization and exclusion and he, uh, it, this, Please read the editorial, we'll put the link down below. You should read the whole thing because it's fantastic. But I'm gonna give you one last line that I loved. He said, laws bereft of justice are the gateway to tyranny. And you gotta stand up no matter who it is that's doing it. Two easy ways to follow Young Turks, one is hit the subscribe button down below, then you're a TYT subscriber, and second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.